Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. So ARK Invest have once again updated their price target for Tesla, which I thought was worth reviewing. Now, of all the analysts and fund managers, Kathy Wood was one of our favorites. She had the nerve to tell everyone Tesla could see massive returns, setting a price target of $4,000. However, that was the pre-split price, so it would just be $800 equivalent today. At that time, I believe the next highest price target was only around $500, and Kathy Wood is throwing out numbers eight times as high. But it wasn't just her. I mean, if you believed in an electric future, could understand how much margin Tesla could generate, and believe they could ramp up, then the numbers were not that difficult. Many of us also arrived at similar figures and thought Tesla could actually warrant such a high price tag by this stage. And that's what Kathy Wood was for. She was our voice, our public relations as an investor, an authority figure that also confirmed our beliefs on how well Tesla would do and made sense to us, whilst all the other supposed authorities were telling us it's going to go bankrupt like every other auto startup and that it's the short of the century. And she was mocked somewhat, mentioning these crazy price targets, and she ended up being wrong. Tesla reached that price as early at the start of 2021. Despite Kathy Wood's what many regarded as crazy aspirations for Tesla, Tesla's stock hit that price earlier than even she predicted. And as a result, she received a lot of kudos for predicting that. It put her on the stage. She had the fortitude to maintain her conviction with Tesla, even through all the volatility and drops that we all saw. This has resulted in ARK's Tesla price targets now being put on somewhat of a pedestal, a lot of pressure to get it right. And we had all these lockdowns and ARK was invested in a lot of the industries that benefited from those, invested in companies like Zoom, which also went up nearly tenfold over this period. Kathy Wood looked like a hero. Anything she touched turned to gold. The ARK ETF increased about three or four times. It was a popular investment. It was a fund set for growth, except the economic climate changed. Growth companies are great when money is just about free, as in very low interest rates. But when rates start to creep up, the opportunity cost on the return increases significantly. On top of that, more people were able to get back to their work or offices. And the period that made other parts of ARK's portfolio prosper were no longer looking so good either. ARK is now trading close to one third of its value from its all time high. Now, we have to bear in mind that Kathy Wood has to manage a lot of stocks, and not just from this one ETF, but multiple. Therefore, it's axiomatic to assume that she simply can't know Tesla, as well as someone who studies only Tesla, like many of us. Yes, she can hire professional stock analysts to work full-time on researching Tesla and the industry, with a good budget and great contacts, but they likely don't have the same passion, nor do they even have as much invested in Tesla as many of us. They just need to look like they've done a good job and Tasha Keeney seems to be the person who has assigned this task at ARK. But understanding Tesla is about much more than studying financials. You need to have a good knowledge of the inner workings of battery cells. You need to understand even the different minerals that go into a cell, along with the mining practices, then all the associated manufacturing, along with the actual EV industry and specifications of the vehicles. This is a lot to fully grasp. In the Tesla community, we're fortunate enough to have people with all sorts of backgrounds in chemistry, physics, batteries, manufacturing, economics, and more, who are actively involved with and discuss their various ideas and theories. Then some of us get to even talk about our theories for, say, 10 minutes or so, with others who are also well versed in the subjects, and then get tons of feedback in comments from people who've been listening. I don't think any stock analyst does this. They have to use the conventional means of researching and analyzing. And it goes further than that too. Now Kathy Wood has already got an arc on the radar from their previous success, and a lot of it coming from Tesla, well, now as a result, these ARK Tesla price targets are looked at as one of the most important price targets from the professionals. But now ARK is on the radar, their objective is to get investors rather than headlines. Therefore, ARK need to think of a price target for Tesla that will still make them look good whilst not making Tesla look too good. I mean, what if they came out with a $10,000 price target? They think you could 10x your return in Tesla in just a few years, whereas the ARK ETF might have only doubled by that time implying Tesla would have been a much better investment. So it's a bit of a dilemma creating a price target for only about 10% of your portfolio whilst trying to make the rest of your portfolio justified. Therefore, we go to the basis of how capitalism works from the legendary Adam Smith himself in how people are motivated by their own self-interest. ARK wants what's best for ARK, a Tesla price target that will motivate people to invest in ARK instead of Tesla. Therefore, I think ARK would start with the price target that would be best and somewhat work back from there. Now we've just had this updated ARK test the price target for 2026, and the expected value is 4,600. 
Now, if this was a cheerleading channel, we would focus on that and how an amazing return that would be for us and praise how amazing Kathy Wood is because she is so bullish on Tesla and she's super smart and she gets Tesla, etc., etc. But now we don't simply accept price targets here and just increase our conviction as a result. We like to analyze what others are thinking in order to improve our thinking for ourselves. Personally, as an investor, I'd be more than content with $4,600. In fact, for my lifestyle, I'm content with the current stock price. But to me and a lot of others, Tesla is about a lot more than just the stock price. The stock price is just a lagging indicator as to how the masses view Tesla's success. Tesla has a really big mission though, on an exponential trajectory. If Tesla are at a stock price of 4,600, then the mission is likely not going as well as we hoped. So I would possibly disappoint it if this is the case. Okay, either way, we expect that a lot of time and investment has been spent on this report. So we may as well take a deeper look. If we compare it to the price target for 2025 that we received last year, well, ARK only had a price target of $3,000. I get the impression that this means ARK are feeling more bullish on Tesla. That's over 50% increase in just an additional year. Also of a bull case now close to $6,000. So where is this value to Tesla comprised? Well, ARK have 54% of the EBITDA coming from robotaxis. All right, so in this scenario, ARK are expecting robotaxis to be a functioning part of Tesla's business. I mean, Elon seems pretty confident FSD will be safe as a human this year, so robotaxis could certainly be operational by 2026, particularly if Tesla are going to start producing their dedicated robotaxi in only a couple of years or so. Now, these robotaxi earnings are a proportion of a total of $280 billion in EBITDA. So ARK think that despite reaching $280 billion EBITDA by 2026, the stock price would only be 4,600. I mean, if you take away tax and the depreciation is going to be negligible by this stage, and you're still sitting at around $220 billion at least in earnings. In other words, they're placing a PE ratio of about 24. And that's when robotaxis have been proven to work and are already generating over $100 billion in earnings. And this is for a $5.3 trillion Tesla market cap. And 62% of that value is from robotaxis too. We've seen the robotaxi numbers. They are much higher than that. If Tesla has reached this level of robotaxis, then their PE ratio should also be much higher. Robotaxi valuation should tower over everything else. ARK have also added Tesla's ride hailing service too. Kathy Wood has talked about this before and said she thinks Tesla should first do a ride hailing service before integrating into robotaxis. Personally, I think it is not at all realistic. It's like taking two steps back. It would require a lot of investment and headaches and to only be replaced within a short period by robots. I think it's nonsensical and would be concerned if Tesla did take this path, but ARK seemed to still be pushing for it. We're also given this table showing a contrast between their bear and bull outcome, but not unfortunately their expected case. But in the bear case, they have 10 million cars sold in 2026 and 17 million in the bull case, despite Elon saying it's probably at 10 years away until they hit 20 million vehicles, not four years away. This is quite the contrast. Okay, sure, we hope that Elon is sandbagging, but still, 17 million vehicles a year by 2026 sounds like a stretch, even from some of the biggest bulls in this community. The average selling price. Well, we have $37,000 in the bear case and 30,000 in the bull case. Okay, these are exceptionally low. We might have thought that this could really only be from ARK thinking Tesla have released a $25,000 model after all, and that might be why the sales are so high too. It's not until we get into the actual model in the spreadsheet we discover what they really think has happened. Well, yes, they do think that Tesla launched a $25,000 vehicle and they're giving it an ASP of $27,000. They're calling it the Model A. I don't like people calling it that as Ford has the Model A trademark and they aren't giving it up. And we all heard Elon say on the last earnings call that Tesla are not working on the $25,000 vehicle. Not only that, ARK seemed to think that by 2026, Tesla would have also come out with an even smaller EV called the Neighborhood EV for $15,000. Not only that, but Tesla will have also made an even smaller micro-mobility EV for around $7,000. Oh, and apparently the total addressable market for this vehicle is 10 billion, more than the population on the planet. I don't think they understand. A lot of other price targets are also still trying to explain how Tesla can reach 10 or 20 million vehicle sales they must achieve this by offering very low cost vehicles or reducing their prices significantly for supply and demand. I think it's more the opposite. Tesla are adding so much value that this is a different product class from a typical vehicle. When you buy a Tesla, you have a vehicle that can drive you anywhere and for a very low cost. This is incredibly more valuable than an ICE car that you have to drive everywhere and costs a fortune. 
Therefore, I don't think Tesla need to reduce the cost of their vehicles like people think. It's the actual cost per mile that matters, which is why robotaxis are so beneficial. But also, the time it would take for Tesla to launch just a $25,000 model, let alone another 15,000 one, and then a 7,000 one? Oh, and to have ramped up significantly by 2026. Well, it just sounds bizarre to me. I actually think we do need lower cost electric transport, but I mean low cost, like $2,000 or so, probably an electric scooter or something. But Elon has said Tesla won't make two wheel bikes because they're too dangerous. They also seem to think that Tesla are hitting up to a 46% gross margin on these vehicles, despite such a lower average selling price. Now, when you lower prices, you tend to lower margins, but ARK think the opposite will be true. The bear case thinks that Tesla will also have reached robotaxis, but still using ride hailing about as much. Whereas the bull case is showing that robotaxis are doing very well. Then aside from insurance, there were no other products that Tesla sell apparently in order to boost the share price. I mean, you would think that if you're going to suggest Tesla are capable of making a $7,000 micro EV by this stage, then they probably made some progress on the humanoid bot. But not only that, if they've got battery prices as low as ARC are implying, then where is the energy business? I think if they added energy, then the numbers get too big. No mention of HVAC or anything else either. But not only are the van and roadster also left out, so is the semi-truck. I think the semi-truck would be a huge part of the business. It feels like ARC have just gone off on their own little tangent of where they think Tesla should be headed, the way they perhaps understand the company. It's all very strange, and contrary to what a lot of things Elon has said in the past, I don't see this as the future. I believe Tasha Keeney is actually quite into the autonomous side of things, so perhaps there is more credibility in her belief as to the success of Robotaxi, which may be the positive to take from here. As far as the product mix, with the price points, I can't see that. It's just kind of a strange price target, but it's good motivation for me to redo mine. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.